Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Today I'm not in my home theater, but we're in my friend Matt's home theater. And as you can see, this is not a dedicated home theater. This is a living room setup, and I'm super excited to share this with you so that we can kind of see how you might be able to include a home theater space in your own living room. So in this video, we're gonna tour Matt's entire setup. We'll talk about the equipment, but more importantly, I really want Matt to kind of walk us through the decisions that he had to make with his home theater and even some of the limitations that he had in his living room. So enough talking, I'm gonna turn it over to Matt and let him share his incredible home theater. Hey guys, welcome to our home. Um, wanted to show you our makeshift home theater that I've got here. Um, it's been a journey that uh, I was not sure what the end destination was gonna be, but this is what we have. Um, We've been in this house for about 20 years. This room has been used for many things over the years. It started out as a, a playroom for my kids, into a TV room, into a hangout room, and now that it's my kids are grown, we're finally able to convert it over to our version of a theater. Um, we, we started about a year ago. Um, did not know we'd wind up to this point, but I decided that I was just gonna replace a subwoofer that I was not happy with about a year ago and that started on my journey um, and you know almost a year later I've replaced everything in here with the exception of an amplifier and my um, power conditioner. We went from a 65 inch OLED TV to about 126 inch um, projector, projection screen now um, and replaced all the speakers, subwoofers, added um, new theater chairs and um, We've had to make some, some difficult choices over the path on what would work in our home. We, we were not blessed to have a, a dedicated room that we could call a home theater, so we've had to make some compromises on what would work in our space, in our home, and not be um, obtrusive, not be things that we weren't um, comfortable with seeing every single day, but yet would still work to give us the best results. Okay guys, so this room really created a lot of problems for me. This, this is a um, pretty typical South Florida home, open concept, um, and it's great for everyday living, but it really imposed a lot of challenges for me when I wanted to create some type of realistic home theater environment. Um, as you can see, I have no back wall, so that created issues with being able to add, you know, rear, um, rear channel speakers, uh, rear surrounds. I've got glass all on this side of the, of the home, which again, I'm not able to put speakers right next to me on, on either side for side surrounds. Got a lot of light problems, got a lot of reflection problems. Um, so a lot of things I had to work around. So a lot of these choices that I made would not have been your typical, let's make this perfect. It was what was gonna work perfect for us in our environment, in our room. Um, my most challenge in this whole room and design was surround sound and Atmos because as you can see, I've got vaulted ceilings here. Um, I've got planter shelves up here. As I mentioned, I have no rear wall. Um, so the front stage was really not much of a problem, but the supporting roles of the other speakers are what really got to be a problem. So. Um, what we came up with, and I'll go over the auxiliary speakers first. I've got um, two speakers up on the planter shelf here that um, most guys would probably call height speakers. Um, I've, I've used them both as height and um, front Atmos speakers. Most of the time I leave them on front Atmos um, and they seem to work well for that. Um, I switch back and forth depending on what material I have and, and what, the, what, the, what the movie is, but they 90% of the time will just stay as front at most. Again, that's not the desired location. That's not the location that Dolby dictates where they should be, but they work pretty well in this room. Um, for rear at most, I've got two ceiling speakers that were originally put there for rear surround um, several years ago, but I have repurposed them now to use them as rear Atmos speakers. Um, I don't recall which model they are, but they're able to be aimed the entire speaker, not just a tweeter pivot so I can aim them. And I've aimed them right to the, rear, right to the seating position and those work pretty well for that. Um, on the back corners, um, 
is my back there's my rear surrounds they are a bit behind us but again with the size limitations I had um, I really couldn't get anything a whole lot bigger than um, some satellite speakers um, especially on this wall by the door you know that was going to stick out and be kind of obtrusive regardless of what we did so um, that was a remedy we came up with um, these are Polk TL3s I believe they have the exact same tweeter as my front channels uh, these are LS, LSIM 705s in the front LSIM 704 center for my center channel um, those have the same mid and tweeter driver as the TL3s for my rear surround and also I have one center back surround speaker um, above this above our seating position in the rear which you'll also see our projector um, I had to improvise a shelf in order to get a projector um, to work in this room we weren't going to put a, a pedestal mount or mount anything from the ceiling so um, I came up with a way to build a shelf there and luckily that location fell center of the screen wall so uh, the location worked out great for that okay so the front channel like I mentioned we have the Polk LSIM 705s um, then we go to the SVS PB16 Ultra which I have two of those that kind of started my whole journey about a year ago as I went to replace a small BIC F12 subwoofer and started on the PB2000 and progressed up the whole line until I wound up with two PB16 Ultras, um, which I thoroughly love. In my mini cabinet, which I actually um, built um, over the summer, I couldn't find anything that was gonna fit in our space, so I wound up um, building this minimalistic piece that I could to fit the equipment in and still be able to have room for mostly the subs. Um, for the main unit, I've got a Marantz um, SR7013 that powers um, everything but the main channels. It powers all my surround channels, all the Atmos speakers. Um, and actually, it even at this point, uh, powers the center channel. Next to that, I have an ADCOM um, GFA 545 amplifier that I've had for almost 30 years. Um, it's my one... Um, constant I've had in my system over the years. It's just been a bulletproof amplifier that runs my um, main left and right. Um, above that I have the, of course the cable box and uh, NVIDIA Shield Pro. I have a Schlitt Audio um, EQ that I use occasionally when I listen to music. Um, center top I've got an old Monster Power power conditioning unit that's been bulletproof over the years that um, has worked great. To the right of that I have the Sony oh it's 800 MK2 I don't remember the exact calls for it um, no problems out of that it's worked great. Um, below that I have a Sony 400 CD disc changer um, and an Xbox One I believe above the DVD player. So this cabinet I decided to make because I could not find anything that was going to fit our space and not have room for extra items we didn't have. I built this entire cabinet out of one sheet of uh, three quarter inch birch plywood. Um, so shelves, dividers, top and bottom are all um, out of one sheet. And then I laminated the, the face with um, just a wood laminate that you can basically iron on and sand smooth and then finish it with a black stain. Um, I've done a fair amount of woodworking over the years, so um, it wasn't anything too extravagant, but I've never worked with black stain again before, and I don't believe I'll ever work with it again. It's a nightmare. But we knew we wanted something kind of sleek looking in the front, so um, it is enclosed. Um, I, did ha I do have two um, Infinity fans on the back that blow from the rear through. Uh, the only thing that really gets hot is, is the Marantz um, and the two fans are right in the center and blow across the amplifier out to the front. You don't hear them. It keeps it cool. I've never had a problem with overheating. Um, the ADCOM amp has never gotten hot. I've never had a problem with that. So 
It's much more enclosed than what I've had previous stands that I've made, but it hasn't been an issue. Okay guys, so part of our big decision process when we did this room was whether or not we were gonna go with a larger screen, TV, or a projector. We had a 65 inch OLED um, LG, which we loved. It was just a remarkable picture, and we knew we wanted to go bigger. Ultimately, we wound up with a JVC NX5 4K projector and 126 inch custom made screen that I made. Um, I originally had made one 120 inch that was a different material. Um, this one is made with the Elite Screen Cinegray 3D material. Above that, I was having reflection problems, even though it was a darker paint. Um, I was having reflection problems onto the screen, so I found some self-adhesive black velvet on Amazon that was um, a long enough length that I could do a one piece and works great and it's absorbed all the reflections off the screen. For seating, we went with the Octane Flash HR theater seating. Um, the criteria we had was narrow seating so we could fit four comfortably in a row, leather, brown, and available immediately without having to pre-order. All right, guys, I have absolutely enjoyed my time here in Matt's home theater. As you can see, this is a living room setup, and I love what he's done in his space. He went as big as he could with the screen, um, with the width that he had and the height that he had, and this image was completely immersive. I think he said we're about 14 feet back. Um, my screen definitely is much bigger. I'm at 150 at 9 feet, but it's like in your face. Um, so this isn't that, but definitely just a great, great size. Phenomenal picture on the NX5. I've been thoroughly impressed with my NX7, his NX5. I even have another friend that has an older JVC projector. The colors on it just really pop. They've just got a really, really crisp image um, and just a beautiful, beautiful presentation on a big screen. And I know one of the things that he mentioned early on in the video is the dilemma do I go with a large screen TV like an OLED or do I go with a big screen projection? And to me, you really just cannot um, replicate the immersion that you get with a projection screen like this on a TV, even if it's an 80, 85 inch. So we had a chance to demo Pacific Rim and Matt cranked it up to a pretty substantial volume and this place was rocking. I've owned the PB16s. I know they're fully capable. These things just really pressurize this room and uh, you definitely feel it along the seats, even without base shakers. And that's one of the things that he's looking into doing um, in the future is adding some kind of base shakers or transducers. And then he also wants to add some other kind of curtains back here that he can even darken up this room even more. But even right now, it's uh, I guess it's about 5.30 p.m. and so there's definitely a significant amount of light still outside and even with the windows closed and the curtains off, this image looked phenomenal. And so if he can darken it up, it's just gonna make it even that much better. So a couple other future upgrades that Matt was telling me he wants to do, he wants to add two more Atmos speakers um, just to kind of fill in because there is a pretty good amount of space and distance between his front Atmos to his rear. So that would definitely allow that kind of a more seamless transition from the front to the back. And then the other thing is he does have a mini DSP to help dial in the subs, but like all of us, it's a pretty um, extensive dive into that world. And so he just hasn't gotten into that yet, but that's gonna be implemented sometime in the near future as well. So if you're considering adding a home theater in your living room space and you don't have a dedicated theater room, my hope through all of these videos is that it just gives you some ideas of what you can do in a space like this, maybe in your setup. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Another tour, I've got a playlist right here that you can check out of all the home theater tours that I've done on this channel. Make sure you subscribe for future videos. And as always, you guys be blessed. And we'll catch you in the next video.